Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about our guide rod system. Okay, so we use the same guide rod in um, all of our pistols. It is a machine stainless steel guide rod. We use a, uh, so there's the rod. We use a chrome silicon spring. Uh, there's a machined uh, washer at the end of it. And then we also have a screw, okay, with uh, blue Loctite. That's what we use, and we'll talk a little more about that in a moment. So uh, why would somebody want a, uh, a system like this? Uh, you'll sometimes see in other pistols a double recoil spring assembly. Um, it does have its advantages, but we think the advantages uh, of this system far outweigh the alternatives. Uh, so I'll show you, this is, a, by the way, MR920 in flat dark earth. Um, I'm not a flat dark earth guy, but this is a really good looking gun and our flat dark earth perfectly matches a couple of the optics out there. I was shooting a, a loophole Delta Point Pro FDE optic on a gun like this uh, actually yesterday and it's pretty sick. So anyway, that's my, my plug for our flat dark earth. Uh, okay, so there's a the guide rod assembly, right? It's fully captured and comes out like this. You'll notice um, the spring curves a little bit when it's, when it's out, that's totally normal. That's uh, it's the way it's designed. We use a chrome silicon spring. If you don't know, chrome silicon is just kind of a higher grade spring material, tends to do better under extreme heat. They, I think that it also does better in terms of service life. So how often do you change one of these? I mean, they're cheap, I'd say 5,000 rounds. The advantage of our system is you're just gonna buy the spring. Okay, you don't have to go buy a whole new recoil spring assembly, which is common with other designs. Um, so let's first show you what that looks like. How do you take one of these apart? And I'm gonna put safety glasses on because when I was 15 years old, I bounced the uh, recoil spring plug of the 1911 off my glasses right, that I wore to see. It was pretty embarrassing. There were a lot of people there. Okay, so uh, here's how you do it. First, we put a cross hole in this rod. So uh, it's a little easier to see here. You'll notice there's a, rod, there's a hole that goes all the way through the rod. That gives you something to hold on to. Okay, when you're torquing the nut or when you're uh, removing it, uh, there's you know a lot of other designs out there you don't have anything to hold on to and you end up with pliers on the back of the guide rod and you chew it up pretty bad. So what do I do? Well, um, you're gonna wanna compress the spring a little bit. You know, I choose to anyway, just to kind of get some of the tension off of it. You'll find that cross hole and you'll stick like a 1 inch punch, something like this through it. Okay, you'll notice now that this washer is kind of freewheeling and now I don't have to contend with all that spring pressure. Uh, it's a 564 uh, hex head in the front. I loosened this one a moment ago, but when they're freshly Loctited, they got a nice click like that. Uh, and that's what you'll, you should hear when you take it out. So you'll unscrew this and now you have your, your washer is released and you'll notice you're still retaining your spring. Okay, this is bas you're basically holding a bomb right now. Okay, so that's a lot of spring on there. Just be careful when you pull it out. Uh, you know, if you wanna like hold it in a t-shirt or something that might help. Um, but when you release it, it all comes out at once like that. Okay, why would we wanna service this? Well, so a couple things. One is we would maybe want to uh, replace the spring. Like I said, every 5,000 or so rounds, we recommend replacing a spring. Sorry, this gun's been shot a lot, so. Uh, chrome silicon springs available from us. They're just a few dollars and you get back in business. The spring that the guns ship with would be kind of like your typical factory equivalent for a you know nine millimeter handgun shooting a standard pressure load. Uh, we don't ship them with a light spring. We don't ship them with a heavy spring, but we have those available as alternatives on the website. Uh, so you would normally replace it with what we call an 18 pound spring. In the world of recoil springs, really all springs, when people say, oh, that's a five and a half pound striker spring, or that's, a, that's an 18 pound recoil spring, uh, spring loads change as they get compressed. So the question always is, well, where did you take that measurement in its travel, okay? As it gets more and more compressed, the load increases. So I'll just say it this way, we use the typical nomenclature of like 15 pound, 18 pound, 20 pound, because that's kind of what's in the market. But really you should, you know, if sometimes people will call and say, well, I thought a standard, like a Glock handgun has a 19 pound spring and you say it's an 18 pound spring. It's the same spring, okay? It's the, they, we have used kind of the tried and true uh, uh, spring characteristics in designing our springs. All right, 
So we'll talk about why we have the other spring weights in a minute, but the 18 pound is kind of the standard. So um, to replace the spring, all right, so very simple. You're gonna put your spring back on the rod. Um, this one's really oily, so it's probably gonna be a huge pain in the butt, but you get it compressed down about like that. Take your punch or whatever you're using and put it through there, and now your, your spring is retained again. Put your washer back on, make sure you face it the right direction with the bigger flat toward the back, and then you can put your, your, uh, your guide rod cap in or your, your screw in. Use blue Loctite please. Okay, it's available at every hardware store. Just put a little bit on there. That's what we use. We have never in our history had a customer lose the screw, had it come out, not in any test firing, not when the gun is doing mag multiple mag dumps and the gun gets hot. We've never had one come out. So don't worry about that. Use blue Loctite. Okay. If you don't Loctite it, the potential for it to come out is real. Um, but don't worry about that either, because I think sometimes people see springs like this or, or systems like this that are that that are serviceable where you can remove the screw and they think, oh, well, that's probably less reliable. Um, it's not. And I'm going to show you why here in a moment. So let's go ahead and put this guy back together. I'm not going to lock tight it because we're just kind of doing a little demo here. And um, I'm just going to do this. And now when I release my spring, the whole thing uh, snaps forward. Let's put it in the gun. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually take that cap back out. So I want you guys to see that the system is completely functional, has no issues when that cap is removed. All right, so we'll take this back out and I'm gonna try not to let it shoot across the room like one of those slinky snakes. Okay, and we're gonna put it on the gun, so the cap is out and the gun's back in business and the gun will function fine. And it is physically impossible for this guide rod to get out of whack or something because it protrudes past the end of that a washer. There's a, there's a, um, a recessed uh, flange inside the washer that, or, yeah, inside the washer that keeps that guide rod fully stabilized even without the screw. So, you know, oh, the, the screw's gonna come out while I'm shooting and the gun's gonna fall apart or stop working. That's not true, okay? Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not even a consideration. All right, now, let's talk about why you might want to uh, change a recoil spring. All right, so I mentioned the whole concept of, um, you know, replacement, but there's also the question of spring weight. And we thought it would be nice for people to have the option to change their spring weight because uh, there's a lot of cool doodads now out there that people put on the muzzles of handguns. So you've got suppressors, lots of different weights, lots of different materials, lots of different lengths. You've got uh, certainly even 45 cans, you know. Um, you've got uh, compensators, multi-port, single port, right? And each time you put something on the end of a gun, depending on its weight, its length, um, it's going to change the, the shooting dynamics, uh, uh, the function of the gun a little bit. And that's why sometimes you hear about reliability issues with suppressors, and we're going to talk more about that on another video. But for now, know that in general, if you have a gun that has a muzzle attachment on it, like a compensator, generally you'll want to go to a, a lighter spring, okay? Uh, whereas if you have something up uh, like a can on a gun, it can kind of be either. In most cases, it's a heavier spring you'll find that you need. The spring weight that we chose, again, we think fits the vast majority of the ammunition that's out there. If you're shooting really light loads, you might get some short stroke with the factory spring. Um, if you're shooting a can, you might sometimes need a heavier spring depending on your can, but Again, we'll talk more about that and why it's like that in another video. Uh, for now though, that's our recoil spring assembly. Uh, that's why we did it the way we did it. We think it's a pretty high quality component. It works really well. And uh, we think that in, you know, for somebody who shoots a lot or has a lot of you know, experience and wants to really tune their gun in, a system like this just makes a lot more sense. All right, so that's what I got for this week. By all means, join us next week for Technical Tuesday. Until then, shoot safe, have fun. And like always, call us if you need something. We'd be happy to help. Thank you.